So I'm going to show you how to take a infrared aerochrome image with just an iPhone and a 720 nanometer infrared filter. What we do is we take our first picture then we place filter front of the lens take our second photo now with those two let's go into affinity photo to combine them okay now that we are in affinity photo we're going to do new stack up photos to select our images click add hit ok now these two images are mostly aligned you can see that wasn't quite perfect, which required the images to be translated a little bit, but good enough, good enough for all practical purposes. There's a little bit of what I like to call trichrome artifacts, um, but they're not significant. These are probably due to wind blowing the tree uh, in between shots being taken. So now that we have uh, the stack created, it looks kind of aerochrome-like, but the reds are a little too deep. We've got this red cast in the sky that we want to take care of, and the uh, and we also need to uh, and we also need to just adjust the image a little bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is turn, make the infrared channel uh, our red channel. So turn off the green and blue colors. Go back here and merge that into that image. Then we're going to go to <clears throat> our channel mixer again and turn off the red channel. So now go to oh, no. wrong one. Total. All right. So this didn't change that much in the image. Just made sure the channels were on the right. Channels were in the right place. Channels corrected. I'm going to go into the stack. I'm just going to merge everything down. And
going to rasterize the image. Go to develop. And what we're going to do is just adjust the white balance a little bit. Let's start there. Decrease the highlights a little bit. Decrease the shadows. Add a little bit more blue. Green. Just the vibrance. Saturation. Add a bit more contrast. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, we're gonna go back to the editor. And we're going to add a curves layer. Select LAB. We're going to start with the A component. I'm going to decrease that a little bit. Add a point. to remove that color cast from the sky. We'll start with that. Go to the B. Try and remove some of the green. Adjust the image so that we can see what we're changing. Okay, let's start there. Now, we are going to add a selective color. We can adjust the various colors to get shade an aerochrome shade that we want I like to go for a little bit pinker color
This just takes time to select the right settings. But once you have these settings, you can actually export them as a lookup table. We have our selective color. We're gonna go back here to collect, to correct any outstanding color casts, just so that we get the right amount of green, right amount of red in our image. Good. The whites are pretty white. Trees are popping with that aerochrome color. And if we zoom in, there's a little bit of artifacting, but overall, pretty good result. So I'm going to go back through the curves adjustment and the selective color so that you can take note of what values I'm using. So for the LAB space, uh, didn't adjust the lightness curve, didn't adjust the master. Um, this this uh, opponent has like a U-ish curve that kind of corresponds to the waveform down here and the B component um, kind of has this rounded uh, kind of a almost a high pass filter looking uh, curve uh, to adjust for those colors and then in the selective color starting at the reds um, minus 100 cyan, 100 magenta, minus 100 yellow, 100% black. For the yellow, uh, minus 100% cyan, 86% magenta, minus 43% yellow, and 100% black. The greens, uh, minus 100% cyan, and the other ones are left alone. For the cyans, 9% cyan, 22% magenta, 2% yellow, and minus 36% black. Uh, didn't change the blues, didn't change the magentas, didn't change the whites, didn't change the neutrals or blacks. So after we've uh, finished our image here, um, I like to uh, export the image and I'm just going to share that back in and save the image. Cancel. So from here uh, I'm going to open Darkroom and finish out the edits uh, in there. So here is our finalized uh, image from Affinity. We first need to uh, crop the image. Just crop it so that we get rid of that adjustment layer. Okay, crop's done. We can do a little straightening now we can go to the, our sliders we can adjust the brightness take down the brightness just a little bit increase
increase the contrast. And give it a little bit more clarity. Cool the image off a little bit. Add. Increase the saturation. Decrease the vibrance. Decrease the blacks. Decrease the highlights and we'll shift brightness up just a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. Let's see. A little bit of vignette sharpen because the iPhone images, uh, once they're combined, they don't quite have the same sharpness level. And I like to add some grain just to give the image a bit more texture. And a little bit of a fade. And we can increase the whites just a little bit. Okay. So that is uh, looking like a pretty good image to me. The whites look white, the trees uh, and the foliage look pink. Um, you can actually notice that the green uh, grass here is... The green grass here is actually fake grass, so that's why it's not... Um, That's why it's not it's not pink in this scenario so that gives you a, a pretty good clue that this is actually infrared um, an actual infrared image and not a image that has been uh, solely doctored uh, with a uh, color selective color because otherwise that would actually turn pink so pretty cool Pretty cool, pretty cool results. Um, I'm actually surprised how easy this was to put together. Um, and uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm gonna have a few images at the end uh, where I did the same process um, and uh, hopefully you like them.